You got your zaf, zafu. Hi, good to see you. Long time. So, do we have more of those snacks? Yes. Why don't you? Why don't you? Why don't you guys get get one each? Because I'm going to have you switch positions. I'll explain it, but you know, people are going to need an empty chair. Or they can stand up. Or they can just go like. Yeah, yeah. Is it okay to have it this far away? Okay, okay, okay. Oh yeah, my head's okay. cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, <Come> on. <laughs> of course. All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the San Francisco Dharma Collective. Um, thank you all so much for being here and your support and your practice. And thank you, Chandra, for sharing the teachings with us. Uh, this week is basically our regular programming. Um, we have the sitting, the morning sits, which start at 7.30, it's peer led, and the sitting in place with Andrea Vecchioni is at 8.30. Our recovery Dharma groups um, are Friday at 6 and Sunday at 5. And after the recovery on Sunday is the Dharma Doors with Michael Owens at 7 p.m. and then Tucker Peck on Monday at 7.30, and then Wednesday, Well of Beings at 7. And thank you all so much for adjusting to the time change. And um, as many of you know, we are volunteer run and funded, and everything is run off of your donations. And um, it's all run on Donna, 
and that is a Pali and Sanskrit word meaning generosity. And traditionally in Buddhism, it is an offering from those who receive the teachings to the teacher as a recognition of the preciousness of the teachings. It's an occasion to recognize our interdependence. So please give generously with joy and know that your contributions are appreciated, whatever the amount is, and no one will ever be turned away for lack of funds. Uh, we take Venmo, PayPal, cash and checks, and someone will post a link in the chat in the Zoom room. Um, also, if you'd like to give the gift of your time, please email me at sfdcvolunteers at gmail.com and I will respond promptly to your emails. Uh, we need lots of help uh, in the Zoom rooms, hosting, it's super easy, um, marketing help, programming, finance. <laughs> so there's committees for everything. If you want to get involved, please um, email me and I'll receive those emails and respond to you quickly. Uh, tonight we have our lovely Chandra Easton, a Buddhist teacher, writer, translator, and scholar, and she will be leading us through the five-step process of feeding your demons, which was created by her teacher, Lama Sultra Malioni, and based on Machi Glabdron's Chud practice, I believe. So, um, all right, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And Wow, <laughs> it's good to be here with you, and you, and you, and you, and all of you. So, and I'm feeling the group too, it's nice to see the online folks, as usual, hi. So this evening is a little different than our normal evenings, right? Usually we sit right away, and then we talk and discuss, but on the Feeding Your Demons nights, we discuss and then we sit. So that's what we'll do now. And how many people uh, have done Feeding Your Demons before? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I didn't see the online folks. Could you raise your hand? Good. So some people have, some people haven't. So what I'll do is give a little overview and how's the sound? Does it sound good? Yeah, okay. So I'll talk a little bit about what it is, but then we'll dive right in. Hopefully those who have heard it before will glean something new. <laughs> and if not, isn't there an old saying that says never underestimate pleasure people get when they hear something they already know? <laughs> so maybe you already know this. Uh, feeding your demons is quite uh, an effective way to work with the things, the dynamics, the feelings, the thought patterns that uh, tend to hold us back in our life, or classically what Machi Glabrin said is that demons are anything that, hold, that block our experience of freedom. And so as I'm talking here, start to feel into, you know, each day we wake up with different demons. <laughs> Each night we go to sleep with different demons, so maybe you walked in here thinking you'd work with one thing, but as I'm talking, maybe there's something else that's bubbling to the surface that feels like, oh, no, that's what I want to do. So while you're hearing the words, also feel the, um, feel your body and feel what's here with you right now. So, as Karen said, feeding your demons is based on a very old tantric practice. It's very alchemical practice. Tantra is all about alchemy. And so what we're doing with feeding your demons is we are, we are practicing alchemy in the sense that we are taking the raw material of the blocks, the challenges in our life, and transmuting them through attention, through uh, perhaps even love, uh, patience, and this very effective five-step framework so that they can transmute into our allies, our guardians, our wisdom, really. It's the knotted, not, the knotted up aspect of confusion, um, pain, suffering, 
lack of clarity that is liberated, hopefully, through the five steps and then can express itself as wisdom. Right? So really, it's the demons aren't out there, allies aren't out there, these are all aspects of ourself. And often what we do in our life, even if we're kind of savvy emotionally or you know we grew up in california or with hippie parents like and, you know although with my hippie parents what i learned to do with my buddhist hippie parents was to spiritually bypass my demons rather than go into them and really learn how to meet them so this was a very effective practice for me because i was good at you know pretty good at sitting and getting you know high on a natural high natural way uh, not so good at meeting the shadow. How many people feel the same way? Maybe you know, they feel the same way. Different, different, yeah. So, or for different reasons, we don't learn in school or by our, from our family how to deal with that. So, feeding your demons is a way to really, in a safe, kind of um, well thought out, well engineered container, meet and then transform these challenges. All right, a couple tips on the process and then we'll dive right in. So, especially for those of you who are new, I want to invite you to see this as being taken on a journey. You're with other like-minded people here. You're in a safe ex environment. It might feel weird to go to these terrain, this terrain with other people that you don't even know. So I just want to also really call in that this is a safe space. We're all here with uh, curiosity, with care, and with mutual understanding that none of us are perfect. And the, the rawness of who we are is what makes us more human and more relatable and more authentic in our life. And the Feeding Your Demons practice is really about learning how to be more like that you know, in our rawness be okay with that and with each other so this is a safe space whether you're at home in your safe space or in this room and some basic tips for the practice i, I printed up an old outline that i made when i first started teaching feeding your demons and i thought it'd be nice to read a little bit from the basic tips that i came up with basic tips for feeding your demons first thought best thought uh, trust your instinct so try not to second guess yourself when an image comes up or an answer comes to you. Try not to second guess that. Usually first thought is the best thought. Now, the first thought might not always be the thought that you stick with. <laughs> you know, you can also let that thought evolve and shift as you move through the process. The image might start one way, but shift, let it. Right? So you don't also 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 have to grasp or fixate onto that first thought or first image. But generally, trust, first thought, best thought, go with it, because all sorts of images are going to arise. Trust it as much as you can. Second tip is keep your eyes closed as much as possible throughout the process. It helps you stay with the process. Uh, stay with the somatic experience. Don't get caught up in thoughts or the story around this issue. That, that can happen. Oh, I know why this demon is here today. Oh, and then we get lost in the story. Like a mindfulness practice, try to release that story, that rerun, and come back to the somatic experience. How does this demon feel in my body? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it constricted? Is it spacious? What? The somatic experience. Come back to that. Release the story. Come back. Release. Come back. Next point is go with it. <laughs> go with what? Not the story. <laughs> Even if images arise that you don't expect, that's the brilliance of this technique. It's the subconscious bubbling up, so don't doubt. So again, trust these images, these feelings, these thoughts that come up, go with it, uh, stay with it, and see what comes. Leave the critic at the door or feed it in the five steps. So sometimes we come to the practice and our critic is so loud 
that it's gobbling up the whole experience, keeping us from really doing what we wanted to do. Uh, sometimes we can just note that and leave it at the door, but other times we might need to say, okay, you're really here, aren't you? Wow, if you're here now, yeah, you're familiar to me. You're probably here in other ways through my life, throughout my life. So maybe I can take you front and center and, you, and feed the critic like a demon. Take it through the five steps. Last point, relax and let yourself go with this and I'll guide you the whole way. So you close your eyes and you're gonna be guided through the whole process. A couple things. There's going to be a certain point where I invite you to um, personify this feeling of the blockage, you know, the so-called demon. You're going to personify it in the space in front of you. Notice what it looks like. And then you're going to ask it some questions. And these three questions are very deliberate. The first is, what do you want? The second is, what do you really need? So that is getting at the need beneath the want. And then the third is, how will you feel when you get what you really need? So we're getting at the feeling tone even beneath that deeper need. And it's that feeling that then will transform into nectar and will feed the demon milk. So those three questions, the first one is more of a superficial thing. The second is a bit deeper. What is the need beneath that initial want? And then the third is, how will you feel when you get what you really need, that feeling? Okay. Any questions before we jump in? Anything? Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 The demon, the, the root, the, the etymology is very interesting and it helped me connect with the meaning of what it is we're working with because it doesn't always look like a goblin. It's not always some malevolent energy. It, sometimes it's just confused or sad or lonely, right? And so the Greek term is daemon. And the daemon was not a negative thing. It was actually your spirit guide. Everybody was born into this world, the Greeks believed, with a daemon who was your spirit guide that lived on your shoulder or around you like a guardian angel. The golden compass. Yeah. So we all know that, perhaps. Right. And so actually the, the uh, Latin version of daemon is genius. So your daemon is your genius. So, I mean, already that tells you this is what we're getting at here. This is more of the ally understanding. So, yeah, don't, you don't need to, it, the demon doesn't necessarily appear in ways that you might assume it will. And then there's a whole other teaching called the, the work with the gods. So what Machig Labrin taught was the gods and the demons are just your hopes and your fears. The gods are the hopes, the demons are the fears. So in Mama Tsultrum's book, Feeding Your Demons, she talks about decide what god or demon you want to work with. So we don't always call it demon, but for facility, we say feeding your demons, and when I'm teaching, I just say demons, but I could just as much say god. So what would a god be? Like maybe you are hoping for getting that job you just applied to, or that position at the university, or the, or the scholarship you just applied for, or that the new love of your life, you know, you're hoping they call you and you can't stop thinking about them. Like, these are hopes. These are so-called gods, like with little g. And so those can also block our experience of freedom, right? But for you, it might be something in between. And she also taught on la dre in Tibetan. It's la is god, dre is demon, like a compound word, same, kind of two different sides of the same coin because often sometimes these gods and demons are linked, not so separate, like a hope over here and a fear over here. We, our hopes and our fears can also be tied up, entangled with each other, right? So fear, 
of success, afraid of falling in love. That's a hope and a fear entangled. So you might also be working with something like that. So when, if you were to do the leading your demons training, you were to become a facilitator, you would go deep into all these different aspects of how these energies manifest in our life so that you could kind of understand in your own self and then help others identify that as well. So that's a long answer to your question. It's a good question, thank you. Okay, are we ready? Okay, so everybody, you're gonna want an empty chair in front of you if possible. So you could just take that empty seat next to you or behind you. If you're on, a, on the floor, you can have a cushion. If you're at home, just make sure you've got either some empty space or an empty chair or a cushion in front of you. Also, if you don't have a lot of space, you can stand up and then turn to face your original seat. You don't need a chair. Okay. Don't worry if you don't know what you want to work with yet. I'm going to give you some time to feel into that right now. So go ahead and close your eyes. We'll spend some time with the breath. Dropping in. Feel the breath descending into your belly, also the side and the kidneys, the low back, releasing tension around the waist with the out breath. Feel any tension in the hips, the low back, the legs, releasing with each out breath. That nice stable base, then travel up through the spine. Notice any areas of tightness through the front or back body chest, the lungs, the shoulders, the neck, the face, releasing tension with the out breath. Before the five steps, we do what's called the nine relaxation breaths. First few breaths, breathing into any physical tension, now feeling your whole body as a global field of sensation, breathing into any areas of tension in that global field of sensation and release with the out breath. Feel that tension melting down into the earth beneath you. With the next few breaths, breathe into any emotional tension. Feel where you might be holding emotional tightness or tension in your body. Breathe into that and then release with the out breath, allowing more space around that as you breathe out. We 
Your next few breaths, breathe into any mental tension, worries or concerns. Feel where you may be holding mental tension in your body. Breathe into that and then release with the out breath. Mental tension melting down, down into the earth beneath you. Now generate a heartfelt motivation for your practice tonight, recognizing that your own practice not only benefits yourself, but those around you near and far. Bodhicitta. We'll take a few minutes here to sink into a deeper quality of presence to allow whatever wants to come forth for you tonight, what you'd like to work with, what's blocking your experience of freedom. Maybe it is a demon, maybe it is a god, maybe it is a god demon, the Madre. It's not so important to know exactly what it is in terms of those three categories, but more about how it feels in your body. So take some time now in silence to feel into what you'd like to work with tonight.
Once you've decided which demon or God you'd like to work with, it'd be helpful now to remember a particular time or incident when it came up strongly. Scan your body and locate where you're holding this demon most strongly in your body. Noticing where this is held in your body and what is the shape of this feeling inside of you? What is its color? What is its texture? Is it rough or smooth, jagged, spiky? What is the texture of the feeling? What is the temperature? Is it hot, cold, warm, neutral? Now intensify the sensation for a moment. Now allow this sensation, color, texture, temperature to move out of your body and become personified in front of you as a being with limbs, a face, eyes, and so on. Sometimes it's helpful to actually make a gesture with your hands, moving this energy out of the body, and let it become personified in front of you. Notice what you see. If an inanimate object appears, imagine what it would look like if it were personified as some kind of animate being. Notice its size. Now 
What is its color? What is the surface of its body like? What is its density? Does it have a gender? And notice its character. Its emotional state. Notice the look in its eyes. Now notice something about the demon you didn't see before. And now ask this demon the following questions, repeating out loud after me. Not waiting for the answer because you'll switch positions and become the demon and answer as the demon in a moment. Repeating out loud, what do you want? What do you really need? 
How will you feel when you get what you really need? Now switch positions, keeping your eyes closed as much as possible. And take a moment to settle into the demon's body. And feel what it's like to be the demon. Feel free to take a gesture, a stance, an expression, help you embody the demon. Notice how it feels to be in the demon's body. Notice how your normal self looks from the demon's point of view. Now speaking as the demon, answering these questions, this time quietly to yourself in your mind. I'll offer the beginning of the answer and you can complete in a full sentence, speaking as the demon, really embodying the demon. What I want is, What I really need is this deeper need beneath the want. What I really need is. When I get what I really need, I will feel. When I get what I really need, I will feel.
Take note of this last answer, the feeling you would have when you got what you really needed. And then when you're ready, now return to your original seat. Your eyes closed. And take a moment to settle back into your own body. See, feel the demon in front of you once again. And now either imagine that your body dissolves into nectar or that you create an infinite amount of nectar. And this nectar has the quality of the feeling that the demon would have when it gets what it really needs, the answer to the third question. And feed this nectar to the demon and notice how the demon takes it in. Be the demon to complete satisfaction. This may take some time. Notice the color of the nectar. Feel this infinite supply of nectar flowing from you to the demon, feeding until complete satisfaction is reached. Nectar has the quality of the feeling it would have when it got what it really needed. The demon consumes or receives the nectar, does it shape shift? Notice what happens.
The being seems insatiable. Imagine now how it would look if it were completely satisfied. Perhaps it's already satisfied. Notice what you see. The demon is completely satisfied. Notice that there's a being present after the demon is completely satisfied. Has it shape shifted into something else? Has it disappeared altogether? It's shape shifted. Ask, is this your ally? If it's not your ally, or if there's no being there at all anymore, invite an ally to appear. Invite an ally to appear before you know. When you see the ally, or even just feeling the presence of the ally, it's okay if you don't see everything clearly. You see or feel the ally, notice the qualities of this ally. Notice what you see. Or what you sense. Notice its size. Its color. surface of its body density. The 
its gender if it has one. What is its character? Its emotional state. The look in its eyes. Notice something about the ally you didn't see before. Feeling connected with the energy of the ally, ask the following questions out loud after me, one by one. How will you help me? How will you protect me? What pledge do you make to me? And how can I access you? Now change places and become the ally. Take a moment to settle into the ally's body. Feel free to take a gesture, an expression, a stance that helps you embody the energy of the ally. Notice how it feels to be in the ally's body.
Notice how your normal self looks from the ally's point of view. Really feeling yourself as the ally. Answering those questions, I'll say the beginning and you can complete in a full sentence internally, quietly to yourself, speaking as the ally. I will help you by I will protect you by I pledge I will. You can access me by
And when you're ready, slowly return to your original seat for the last time. Take a moment to settle back into your own body and see the ally opposite you once again. See, sense the ally in front of you and look into its eyes and feel its energy pouring into your body. As you feel the energy of the ally coming into your body, feel that it spreads all the way down to the soles of your feet to your fingertips and throughout your whole body. Now imagine that the ally dissolves into light. Notice the color of this light. And then feel this light dissolving into you, integrating this luminosity into every cell of your body. Notice the feeling of the integrated energy of the ally in your body. Now you, with the integrated energy of the ally, dissolve. Dissolve into spacious awareness and rest in that state, that spacious open presence. Just rest.
Now slowly, gradually come back to the room, to the, the body. Feel the breath in your belly, clothes against your skin. Recall the feeling of the energy of the ally in your body. And as you slowly begin to open your eyes, maintain this feeling of the energy of the ally in your body as you begin to look around and come back into the space. as the ally still living in your body let's rearrange the furniture So, welcome back from your journey. <laughs> so, you don't need to talk if you don't want to, but some of you may have questions or comments or sharing. Feel free to speak aloud. Also, we have the online group too. I don't know, they could raise their hand, right? And, Noam or I could call on you. So any observations? Sometimes it can be nice to hear what your demon looked like or how it transformed. What did the ally look like? I certainly had some imagery come up this time. Um, you don't have to give the gory details of exactly what you were working on unless you want to. But it can be helpful for other people in the room to, to hear a little bit. We all learn through you. We learn through each other. So, also questions. Karen, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, we're going to give people the mic in the room. I guess I still, you know, I've done this a number of times now, and sometimes I still have trouble at the end uh, with the, uh, how will I access you? I sometimes don't know what to do there, and I still get hung up on that one. And other than that, it was pretty fun. Um, I don't know. Um, I guess I just don't know how to remember it, or how to draw it back. If and when I need it, or I'm going to forget it, and I don't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> we could try. <laughs> yeah, sometimes people have a hard time with that one. Like, how can I access you? Wait, what are we talking about? <laughs> but it can be, uh, it's really what we're getting at is, how can, how can, um, or let me speak as the ally. So how can, maybe you could be, I'll be your ally. <laughs> uh, I wanna help you remember me, you know? I wanna help you remember me in the future so you can remember, you can access me by taking a deep breath, slowing down, or feeling yourself wrapped in a warm cloak of my love, you know? Uh, you know what I mean? It can be simple. It's always simple. For me, it's simple like that. I don't know about other people. Simple. <laughs> A mantra. 
you're going grandiose. That's okay. It can be like that sometimes too. But, you know, don't force that, right? Because then if you're forcing it, then you're not. Or if, if you're in a, you're like, oh, is this, I think getting simple will help you. Yeah. Then it can be a little bit more innate later, <laughs> maybe. Okay, good. Good question, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Um, uh, yeah, I was working with this, um, just kind of like my spiritual super ego of like, I need to figure out my path. <laughs> um, and my demon was wearing purple. And then when I switched, I was like, wow, I'm wearing purple. It's so funny. Um, yeah. 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 I was like, oh, wow, I'm wearing purple, just like my demon was. And, um, but then, yeah, my demon shifted somehow into um, Mary Magdalene. <laughs> yeah, into my ally. Yeah, and like this woman who was like profoundly heartbroken and powerful and filled with spiritual longing. And um, yeah, it was just very surprising. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, she was wearing, <laughs> no purple, she was wearing, she was like looking into like a, a lake and kind of like staring at the lake and kind of like looking at me, but being like, you've got it, like, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> um, but becoming her, it felt, um, I don't know, I guess like feeling into my own, like, just like heartbreak and that like my spiritual path has to include that you know like I, I can't be you know like you were saying in the beginning like spiritual bypassing or like thinking like oh yeah we're just calm you know so and to like really honor that the longing and the heartbreak yeah yeah so i just wanted to share <laughs> can i reflect a little bit back to you because what i it's so beautiful and um what what just came to me as a feeling when you were talking about that is that it's actually not that far from you because it's the heartbreak you know we all know we know the heartbreak you you know your normal self and the, and the demon and the ally know the heartbreak right and it's, that spiritual awakened side of you knows that too you know what i mean yeah that's beautiful thanks for sharing what's your name sally yeah I kind of like the seat thing we haven't done this in the past but it's nice thank you for having the guts to do that it actually makes me feel like my old acting class or something you know like part of the feet of your demons is facing your fear and coming up and taking your seat <laughs> You don't have to, but you do have to talk in the mic for the benefit of all sentient beings. <laughs> oh, no. No. Okay. No. Okay. I'll be quick. Uh, uh, someone in the chat shared, and they asked me to read it out loud. Back to you. Um, he said, my demon was not very clear, but at some point it felt like a flying monkey and its ally form was like a small clay tiger. Once it dissolved into light, a lot of pains in my body disappeared. That can happen. Thank you for sharing, you know. That's happened with me with physical pain, you know, working with that as a demon. Yeah, I just notice, oh, that pain's not there anymore. Doesn't always happen, but I can. And then I'm also getting like Kung Fu Panda imagery. <laughs> the, the monkey and the clay tiger. Yeah, anyway, so it's, it's, sometimes these archetypes will come to us and they don't have to be like holier than thou archetypes either. They can be cartoon characters from our childhood or, or not. And then somebody else had their hand raised. No? 
It might be me. They're gone. Um, oh yeah, there you are. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Perfectly. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Okay. I'm Chelsea. Um, Chelsea. I've done this a good bit and this time I got stuck in a place that I never have. Um, so it was trying to feed the demon and it was like a younger version of myself. And I got this funny like pain in my throat and it felt like something like wanted to move there. And so I started like trying to like be kind to it with the like nectar. And I sort of got this like strange snake stuck in my throat. It's a little scary, right? And I couldn't get it to move. And actually it felt like today the nectar went on for a long time. And I just kept being like, okay, this is fine. I'll just keep trying to feed the demon, but actually the demon couldn't take any nectar in because there was like something preventing it. Um, and then I sort of just, things fell apart. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you for sharing. So I wanna make sure I'm understanding. Can I ask you a couple of questions about yeah. that? Just so I'm, I understand. Okay, so yeah. when you were feeding the demon, you said that it, in your own body, it felt like a snake something was blocking your throat mm -hmm. you as chelsea yes and then also that corresponded with the demon not being able to take it in mm -hmm. yes yeah yeah so that feels core that feels mirroring in a bit right that the, mm -hmm. somehow like you weren't able to did it feel like you weren't able to give the nectar because of the thing stuck in your throat yeah I think I attempted to continue to, but maybe it like wasn't transferring in some way. I, I just yeah. felt like um, the demon certainly couldn't take it in. Yeah. And I was feeling the demon's pain in that the demon and I sort of like stopped being entirely separate things. Yeah. Yeah, that can happen. And sometimes when that fusion when the separate you know the we're intentionally you know we're intentionally personifying that and giving it some space yeah from our usual face plant from the feeling of the demon and so integrated in our life mm -hmm. sometimes that can refuse and that's okay um you know you're you're at home alone which is good and when something like that comes up i'm just getting an intuitive hit that next time or even after the call now you don't have to go back into the whole five steps but or if that mm -hmm. happens again in the five steps start vocalizing start making some sound to oh. move the block mm -hmm. in, in the throat because my sense is that something was wanting to move you know and you got to listen to that and, and honor that and because you're not in the room with everybody else you don't have to be self-conscious about like Ugh, singing or making barfing sounds or you know saying you know making vocalizing whatever um could help you move that energy you know the throat chakra is a very important chakra right and um often that's the this is the funnel i mean when you look at the body it's like the small pathway here and a lot gets stuck here so when the belly starts opening when the heartbreak or the heart starts opening often it'll get stuck mm -hmm. feelings if they want to trying to move they can get stuck in a throat so i have a feeling that i don't know what you were you know if we were working one-on-one -on -one, we could unpack this a little bit more mm -hmm. and i could help help you move through this or understand it and the next time you'd know what to do when this came up more readily or, or maybe it would resolve itself but um, I think that do some vocal stuff just make some noise and then see if even like even just spontaneously go back into feeding that noise as nectar to the demon hmm. sure you know mm -hmm. uh, oh. You know, whatever you have to do to get that energy to move, you know, nothing's too sacred. And, and, and then offer that, not in anger, but like as a heartbreak offering to the demon. You know? mm -hmm. Maybe it would want that. Maybe it would be like, yeah, that's the kind of nectar I want, <laughs> you know, like 
Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Am I, am I yeah, on, I'll give that a try. Point? Yeah, I think that it's um, interesting that the feeding of it can happen in like a variety of ways. There's probably like physical movement that can also be yes. part of feeding. And like, I've never thought about that. So that's yeah. helpful. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, people, you know, I've done one on ones with people or been in trainings with people where they've gotten up and they've made noises or, huh, mm -hmm. you know, Lama Soltrum is very clear. She's like, this isn't like drama therapy, but it kind of can be a little bit like that. If you really feel that you needed to go there. <laughs> but um, that's why I say feel free to take a gesture or a stance to help you become the demon or become an ally. But also that could extend into the feeding, you know, if you need to, if you need to be like, <sighs> you know, sometimes I'll do that. I'll make gestures. I'll be like, <sighs> you know, got my fire hose you know whatever it is to help move the energy because we can get a little stuck and you know the energy wants to move you have to honor that it's like the kundalini waking up you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah so if you come back to the throat maybe do another feeding your demons around that and really take that you don't have to know the story of what it is that you're feeding. It can be like a pain or a block in the body. You don't have to know why that's there. Hmm. You know, you can work with low back pain. You don't have to know why that's there, or chronic headaches or TMJ or all these wonderful things that we experience being in a body. You don't have to know why it's there, where it came from or what it means even. You can just drop right in. And you could drop right in, Chelsea, if you wanted to, and just be like, okay, blockage in the throat, texture, what is it, you know, color, what is it, size, you know, do the five steps with it. Mm -hmm. That could okay. be your starting point. Yeah. Correct. Thank sense you. that the demon couldn't take it in because there was something stuck. Something was stuck. It's okay. That's a learning. That's a beautiful mm -hmm. learning. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we are at time, 8.35, right? Is that, yeah, time flew, for me at least. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it did for me. So thank you, it was so fun to be here and I love the space. And if any of you can come in person, wherever you are, come. Uh, it feels really good to be here. Yeah, with all of you. Thank you, Noam. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Mace. I appreciate all of you making this space so beautiful. And um, for those of you who are new and never done this before, congratulations. You, you just did a big thing. And it's, it's like, the, for me, the Feeding Your Demons is like a internal housekeeping is what I often say about it. I don't know if you feel that way, but oftentimes it's like clearing the cobwebs. Oh, something's stuck. Something's not feeling right. I'm not clear on something. Oh, I can sit down and do Feeding Your Demons and oftentimes have a lot more clarity right at my fingertips. Mm -hmm. So um, I did bring some handouts. There's a guided script if you wanted to take yourself through it on your own. There's also this um, tracking form, which is like a journal and help you remember what came up. If you want to take one of each, feel free to do that. And then do some journaling at home before you go to bed or in the morning as much as you can remember. Um, yeah, thank you, everybody. Anything else? This do we need to do anything else? We're done? Okay. All right. Take care. Yeah, thanks. It feels weird to be in person. <laughs> I was like used to like saying goodbye online. Like, you know, okay, bye. Click. <laughs>